February 19, 1945, American forces land on the shores of Iwo Jima. What starts as a plan to take the island in a matter of days becomes a protracted battle with entrenched Japanese infantrymen willing to fight to the death. For each square foot, Iwo Jima will become one of the bloodiest battlegrounds of World War II. Howard Baxter was with the 5th Marine Division. It was here that he would live through hell on earth on the battlefront. By late 1944, American forces had been taking back islands of the Pacific from the Japanese. Only 600 miles south of Tokyo lies the tiny island of Iwo Jima, a volcanic speck in the ocean. On December 8, 1944, American B-24s call on the island. The Japanese have been using Iwo Jima to stage raids on American B-29 bases in the Marianas. Admiral Nimitz makes it a top priority. Neutralize Iwo Jima and take it in February. For 74 days, American bombers hammer the island. February 12, 1945, an armada of 485 American ships are about to begin the invasion of Iwo Jima. The strike force is to join Admiral Raymond Spruance's 5th Fleet. It is the most powerful naval force in history that is assembled under one flag. The invasion is set to commence on February 19th. Three Marine Divisions make up the assault force. The 4th and 5th Divisions are to go in first and blaze the trail. Aboard the ships are 75,000 assault marines. Among them is graphic artist Howard Baxter, who is trained as a parachutist. I was still a private first class. And I was, when they uh, dissolved the paramarines and the marine raiders, they dissolved them and we formed the basic corps of the 5th Marine Division, most of us. I was in the infantry. I was a Browning automatic rifleman, what they referred to as a BAR man. We never knew we were going to hit Iwo Jima until we were aboard ship a couple of weeks. And then they brought out these clay model maps that would show the miniature version of the island. And that's when they then told us what we'd be hitting and how well they were dug in, all the tunnel caves and everything that were there. We thought about five or seven days is estimated that. We had three divisions that we, they were committing. Two initially at, to make the beachhead and the the third in reserve, which amounted to approximately 60,000 men, plus reinforcements. The island at the longest point was seven miles. The volcano sat at the one end. The narrowest point was half a mile wide. But Iwo Jima is of strategic importance. It would provide a much-needed emergency landing strip for the crippled American B-29s returning from Japanese bombing raids. Commanding the island's defense is one of the Japanese High Command's toughest officers, Lieutenant General Tadamichi Kurabayashi. In June 1944, he is sent to Iwo with a mission to save the island or die fighting. In the next three months, he moves in guns, tanks, and troops, doubles the size of his fighting force, and does his best to render the island impregnable. Men arrive at the rate of 500 a day. By October, 21,000 troops are on the island. The Japanese laborers work under horrendous conditions in sweltering heat to fortify Iwo Jima. Kurabayashi has decided on the best mode of defense for Iwo Jima. There will be none of the typically Japanese bonsai charges, no suicide counterattacks at the beachheads. The commander has ordered his troops to mount a static defense with everybody dug in. He divides the island into separate defensive sectors, then rings each one with guns, mortars, landmines, and bunkers five feet thick. Underground, the island is a honeycomb of rock and cement, five levels of tunnels, 
most of them 30 feet below ground, connect the entire complex. When the attack comes, any advance will be made over dead Japanese bodies. American commanders are aware that such a huge fleet movement will not be a secret. Japanese spotter planes and submarines track it every nautical mile. Kurabayashi is alerted to the approaching invasion. Japanese intelligence estimates it will start between February 15th to the end of the month. The Japanese are braced to fight to the very end. Every soldier knows the importance of holding off the Americans. At 6 a.m. on February 16th, and American bombing runs continue. It made us feel really good to have those that battery opening up there and blowing things to smithereens. We also saw what the battleships and the cruisers were doing to the volcano there. They were knocking out whole hunks of it into landslides. We thought they were doing a real trippy job. Finally, the day of the invasion, February 19, 1945. American intelligence estimates the Marines will be facing over 22,000 soldiers. You actually try to numb your feelings. I know I did. You just don't know what's going to happen. You know that this is going to be a rough one. You know, you're out quite a ways, and slowly you're getting closer and closer and closer in the roar of the motor of the uh, Higgins boats and the landing craft. The spray and salt spray, so the surf gets kind of rough and then all of that water swirling around from all the other boats in the water. You have to get used to being there. You have to get your physical and psychological machinery going to where you have to do what you have to do. Everything in you wants to run, wants to get out of there, but you can't do that. They put you there and you got to fight your way out. That's what you have to do.